this morning I wanted to talk about destroying the root of bitterness. Destroying the root of bitterness. And if, we, uh, if you've got your Bibles, you probably, uh, it's going to be difficult for you to see. If you've got your iPhones, it's probably going to be easier. So if you want to take those out, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. And I'll read it for you. Um, so it says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace or the favour of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Many be defiled. So an interesting scripture. Now, it, this scripture comes behind a couple of chapters. Now, we all know the, the Hebrews 11 chapter is about people who had been living the faith life. And what had happened was that, uh, that, that they'd all been, um, they'd all been uh, in, in the faith fight like you guys are. And what had happened was that they were uh, declared as victors even though they haven't achieved, achieved their goal. And then a, a little bit later in Hebrews 11, we find that people have been persecuted and, and, um, and had been, uh, some of them had been sawed into and a little bit like this morning, we're hearing about Christians whose faith had been put on trial. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, it talks about our own personal faith life. And it starts talking about the fact that we need to um, be diligent and examine our faith life to see where, we are, uh, see where we are. And it actually talks about Jesus and it says, look unto Jesus. So actually, if you've got your, your Bible, we might actually read a bit more of that. So we'll go over into Hebrews chapter 12. It says, Wherefore, seeing we're also compassed about by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that easily besets us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. And so what, what happens is the writer of Hebrews is taking and, and making a personal application. Now, he goes on in verse 3, he says, For consider him that endured contradiction now here's one of the things when you're living the faith life one uh, one thing you're going to encounter is contradiction now who knows what the word contradiction means anyone contra means against i don't know what diction means but i know what being contradiction means uh, being contradicted means it really means that someone or something is coming against you now I, a lot of times if i'm stepping out on in faith i find that there are things that come against me now we know what faith is what's faith everyone says faith is the evidence of things you can't see so a lot of times what happens is in your in your christian life you'll be stepping out and going places that has no evidence that you should go there that's the difference between living in the senses. The senses are a sure thing, but when we live in by, uh, we're living by faith, we're actually living by what God says. A great example of this is when we tithe and we give offerings, you do, it does not seem a logical investment to give away, or you know, we wouldn't say give away, but people think you're giving away money because the tithe is the Lord's, is it not? Everyone said, oh, amen. So it's, it's the Lord. So we're not, when we tithe, we're giving, we're not actually giving to God. It's his property. And of course, we understand the tithe is a test of our faithfulness. So when we step out in faith, we're stepping out on something we can't see or can't feel. Another example of that would have been Peter stepping out of the boat. I don't know how many of you have tried walking on water, but I found it's quite difficult uh, if you've ever stepped in the bath, you realise that that top part of the water, yeah, it doesn't hold you up, does it, really? Uh, or you've stepped off a pier or something like that. You know, now Peter stepped out of a boat by faith and found that when he stepped out of, out of the boat by faith, the sea, and I don't think it was the sea because it says the sea was quite rough. I'm still bemused at how he navigate those waves as they're coming through. I think he was standing on something that was fairly flat and was 
somehow above the sea. I think he was standing on something that was firm in the spiritual realm. And that's what faith does. It creates a firm foundation for us in the spirit realm that we can't see. Now, what Jesus is talking about here is when you live the faith life, there's a contradiction. Now, Peter found that he had a contradiction. He started looking at the waves and the wind. The wind and the, I don't know how you look at wind. I think he was looking at the effect of the wind. Um, yeah, but he was looking at, at something, and what happened was as he looked to that, he started to sink. He got so, uh, so sinky that he had to call out. So his faith was sinking, and he called out and said, Jesus, 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 I'm going down. I can imagine that he would have been actually yelling <laughs> at that time because... It says that the waves were really boisterous and it was in the middle of a storm. So Peter was, he was contradicted. And the waves and, the, and everything that was, he was looking at was a contradiction to his faith. And so when you start to walk by faith, don't be surprised when you get contradicted because there is someone that doesn't want you to walk by faith. There's someone in the world that doesn't want you to... Now, why would he not want you to walk by faith? Well, if we went over to 1 John, we find out that the way that Christians win or overcome, they only overcome by faith. It says, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. It's our faith. And so as Christians, we're called to walk by faith. That is to walk by things that we can't see. That's a very difficult way to live if you haven't got other images other than, than what you're looking at out in the visual world. So how do we get to a point where we can see clearly into a, a, an area that we can't see? That sounds kind of bizarre, doesn't it? How can you see something you can't see? Well, what... Paul says is that whilst we look not at things that are seen, but the, the, the things that are unseen. So we understand that in the spirit realm, there are unseen things that we can look at. Now, you're not going to see them with these eyes. You're not going to see them with these eyes. But if you closed your eyes, and I called out the word dog, and then I called out black dog, and then I called out a three-legged black dog, you would start to see a dog, but it wouldn't be right out there, would it? It would be in your imagination. Now, it's very interesting that Jesus has given us his words so that they can create image. Now, when I started talking about your, your dog, not your three-legged dog, but that dog, that black dog, actually yours is brown, the little one, um, then you, what happens is that you start to get an image on the inside of you. Now, Tommy this morning was talking about developing a relationship with a Heavenly Father. And what happens is that when you have a conversation, uh, when I have a conversation with my children, a lot of times I, found a, I find out what's going on in their life. I find out because they start to convey what's going on through... Um, through their words. Now, I'm not actually living with them, but they begin to tell me words, and those words create images in, in my head, and I begin to see what's been going on the, in their life. Now, it's funny because the Lord has given us this word so that we can look at it, and what it does is it creates images inside of us. And that allows us to walk by things that we can't see visually. So this is talking about things that are in another realm. Now, it's interesting. Jesus calls it the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is without visual representation. Now, when he went around, he started preaching a lot about the kingdom of God. And the Pharisees were getting aggravated because they said, where is this kingdom? Where is this kingdom you're talking about? And Jesus said, the kingdom that I'm talking about isn't visual or you can't see it, it's here, 
that you can't see it with or perceive it with your senses. But it, nonetheless, it was still there. And so what we find is that when Jesus walked around, he had with him the kingdom of God. And so when he walked in, what happened was that things, I remember him talking about one time he walked into a synagogue and then suddenly someone stood up and started shouting. Now that's a pretty amazing thing. You've just walked into the synagogue or the church this morning and then someone stood up and started shouting at the top of their voice and saying, what are you doing here, Jesus? That'd be a bit strange, wouldn't it? This is what Jesus was doing. Everywhere he went, things would start to change in the physical realm. And so we found that this guy actually had something spiritual on the inside of him which came out. And um, we were talking, we're, actually we were talking about before that uh, the Lord was talking about the, uh, a root that is in many, many people and... Um, and it's this root of bitterness. And a lot of times what happens is that we can't see the spiritual things that are on the inside of people. But there are telltale signs that we can detect things, um, detect on the inside of people. They may not be visual, but a lot of times we can tell what's on the inside. And a lot of times they're spiritual things. And what we can, what we can detect is on the inside of people. Uh, people is by what they say you know we were saying before that words have images and the lord was talking about people who have this uh image on the inside on the inside a root of bitterness now uh, mike connell talks about uh, a particular a church that he was going to and he had a word of knowledge about a particular person and he said there's someone here that's got an ache in his shoulder and um, and the, uh, the, the there was a young boy that uh, young teenager 18 19 put up his hand and, and came out and um, the Lord st- started to minister through Mike and said ask him about his dad and uh, the guy uh, uh, Mike said oh how do you feel about your dad and the young fellow said oh I love my dad and uh, he said, oh, you, yeah, oh, well, that's good. And then uh, it, it just, um, and then Mike started to get a bit of a revelation. He said, oh, I think, is there something, does your dad go away from home a lot? Or has he gone away from home a lot? And he says, yes, he does. And then he said, uh, he wasn't there for a lot of times, important times in your life, was he? And, uh, and with that, the guy said, uh, no, he wasn't. And then Mike went on and said, and you you're, you were very angry about that, weren't you? And so what happened was that, that, um, that he started to realise that he had all this anger and resentment towards his father. Now, one of the scriptures that is a key scripture in this book talks about how we need to honour our parents and um, that things may go well with us. Now, uh, so Mike pursued this word of knowledge and said, well, I feel like the Lord's saying that there's a spirit of infirmity that is in your body that is connected to a resentment that you have towards your father. He said, uh, the, the young fellow fessed up and said, well, actually, I've been really thinking about how much I dislike my father and how discontented I am with him over this last week. Of course, Mike would say, uh, you know, said, oh, really? <laughs> As he does. <laughs> oh, really? And um, Mike said, do you think you could forgive your father uh, for that time? And, and then he publicly got up and, and, um, and forgave his father and and uh, in front of all the other students and said that he'd be given his dad and for all those times that he hadn't been there um, because he was a travelling, I think he was a travelling salesman, salesman. It's not that the father wasn't doing things, it's just that he wasn't there in important times. And so he'd forgiven him and Mike said, well, how's your shoulder? He said, oh, my shoulder, 
my shoulders better. So I better say that Mike actually prayed for him, rebuked the spirit of infirmity over him. He says that's what he discerned it is, a spirit of infirmity. And what had happened was that this resentment had let a spirit into this person's body. And so he rebuked the infirmity and he said, how's your shoulder? Well, the shoulder was, was, was great. He said, but wait, there's more. Sounds like an ad, doesn't it, hey? <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, I would have excruciating pain in all of my joints in my body all the time. And he said, and that pain's gone. And then the guy said, but wait, there's something else. And he said, uh, I'd, I went to the doctor recently and they examined my backbone and uh, they said that what was happening was it was starting to the joints were starting to weld up and by the time I'm 40 the doctor said that I would never be able to be able, uh, be able to bend or be able to uh, move my my back uh, forward and back and he said and my back has just been released and um, and Mike said you know bend over touch your toes which he did and could do now so there's it's interesting that jesus had a very similar encounter with a particular lady and uh, i think it's in luke uh, i won't go there now but jesus had walked into a synagogue and there was a lady who had a spirit of infirmity does anyone know for how many years 18 years 18 years this woman he discerned now how did jesus know that jesus didn't know there was figs on the fig tree because he walked over and said there's no figs here did jesus know everything guys no he didn't but the spirit of god had revealed as he walked in that there was a lady who had an infirmity 18 years a spirit of an, an infirmity and was bowed over now this spirit of infirmity had come into this lady and had lived there for how many years 18 years and she was bowed over so when when we say bowed over what was happening was she was over like this and had to walk looking at the ground all the time and that's what this spirit had done to her now how many years? 18. So that tells me that 19 years ago, what wasn't there? The infirmity. This spirit came in at a particular time. Now, it doesn't go on and give any details about what had happened to this lady, but I believe 18 years ago there was some kind of trauma that had taken place in this particular lady's life and that and that this trauma had allowed or something had allowed this spirit to come in and begin to take over this lady's body now what did we find out about the young gentleman mike was talking about he made a decision didn't he this is very unfair and so what happens is a lot of times when unfair things happen in our life, we make decisions and we form what we call judgments or we become the jury and the executioner. It's very interesting that, that the Lord said that he, as a judge, remember I, I started off talking about Peter? And uh, Peter made some words and he, 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 he made a statement about all the other disciples. He said, though all of them fail or deny you, I won't. So what we, he was very brave to say that. What was he saying about all the other disciples and what was he saying about himself, do you think? <laughs> They're all unfaithful, that's right. And I am the faithful one very dangerous word so he had judged the other disciples and so what jesus said is if we judge people we're guilty of the very thing that we're judging them for so it's very dangerous to put judgments or to have judgments in your mind about others 
And what had this young fellow thought about his dad? He had unforgiveness towards his father. Now, what, what, uh, what we find in the scripture, Jesus said, he talks about a particular person. He gives a wonderful illustration about a person who had got into debt. He got into debt. And he not only owed $100, he not only owed $1,000, he not only owed 10000 he owed millions of dollars to a particular person. And uh, he, it came to a stage where he needed to pay the money back and he couldn't pay. And so what was going to happen is not like nowadays where you can declare bankruptcy. Back in the olden days, what they did was if you couldn't pay a debt, they started taking away things. And once they'd taken away all your land and all your house, they began to take away other things. And they began to take away your children and make them slaves. Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. <laughs> Have you met my children? Uh, no, it doesn't sound like a good idea to me. It would be heartbreaking to see your, your, your children getting sold off as slaves so they would go and have to live with another family and start to serve that other family and you would never be able to see them uh, again. And, uh, and then if they got through the children... They then sold off your wife. Everyone say, Sila. <laughs> no, kidding. <laughs> they sell your wife, and then, of course, if that wasn't enough, what would they do? You would become a slave yourself. And so this was what was going to happen to this particular person. They were going to, their family was about to be sold off, it had come to that and he was going to become a slave. And do you know what this particular di person did? He threw himself on the floor and begged the person who he'd borrowed from, begged that, that his children and his wife wouldn't be taken away. Now that's amazing, isn't it? He threw himself down and asked that this wouldn't happen. And then do you know what the, the particular landowner or the uh, person said, didn't say off with his head, it says that he had mercy on him and he looked and he said, you, you silly dill, how did you get yourself in such a terrible mess? And it says that he had compassion on him and he had mercy on him and this is what he did, he forgave him the whole debt. Millions and millions of dollars, he said, you don't owe me a cent anymore well how would you feel how how do you think he felt i just i i would have thought oh my goodness i can't it's like winning tats lotto isn't it you've won all these millions of dollars only you really didn't win it someone was very lovely and just gave you all that so which is just amazing and um and so what happened was that he was forgiven all of that debt but then a little bit of time passed and he was down the street. And lo and behold, across the street, he saw someone who owed him some money. And you would think, oh, my goodness, he's just been forgiven all this money. He'd be feeling very happy. He'd be generous. He'd be but you know what he did? He ran across the street. And the, the Bible says that he grabbed this person by the throat and said, pay me my $20. That's kind of what, that's how much this guy owed him. And do you know what the guy said? I can't. I haven't got it. If you'll wait just a little while, I'll get the money and I'll get it to you. And do you know, what do you think he would have said? He just experienced that lovely Master, for giving him millions of dollars. What do you think he should have done? He should have perhaps led, said, hey, let's forget about that. But do you know that he didn't? He said, right, I'm going to get you to have to go to jail until you can pay me. Do you think that's very fair? This guy's just been forgiven all this money. And then what's happened is that he's called this person or account and said, you've got to pay up now, and if you don't, I'm going to send you to prison. I can't believe that. 
but that's what he did. The only trouble is he had some other people who knew about this who worked for the big boss. And you know what they did? They were very grieved that their friend was now, their other friend was now in jail because of that. And they went and told the big boss. And he, this is what happened. He brought the other person who he'd forgiven the debt to and he brought him in and he said, did this happen? Did this person, did you take him to, and the guy had to fess up and say, yes, I did. He said, I forgave you all of this, all of this, all of this huge debt, and you wouldn't even forgive this person $20? And then what happened was he said, right, everything that's been forgiven, that's all finished with now. You owe me all that money again, and your children and your wife will be sold to pay off that debt. And that was a story that Jesus told. Now, it's very interesting. He was telling us that about forgiveness. What, what, why would he tell us that about forgiveness? Do you know that what he said was that unless we forgive like our Heavenly Father, we'll be taken to jail and we'll have to pay our debts. Now, getting back to that young guy who, who had that spirit of infirmity, now, it says not only will you be taken to jail, but you'll be tormented in jail by the tormentors. Tormentors are, are demons who uh, their job is to torment people. And they torment non-Christians. But when Christians won't forgive, what happens is that it allows tormentors to come in their life. Now, what allowed that spirit inside that person's body? he had not forgiven his dad remember and then mike said do you think you can forgive your dad for not being there and what did he say he said yes that's right so mike had prayed for him that spirit of infirmity left and when it left no pain the pain went out of his out of his shoulder and it also went out of his out of his yes, out of his back too. He could he could now stretch his back, and it was all through his joints as well. You see now, what would be we could probably go to to the doctor and get that diagnosed, couldn't we? But what's the problem with just going to a doctor who and and we're not against going to doctors because doctors have gifts and they can help us. But what would have been the problem if we just went to the doctor? Who had to deal? with the real problem, the doctor or the young man? The young man, you see. It was his choices to forgive his father that set him free, you see. And we said, unless we, that's what Jesus was saying, unless we forgive like our heavenly father, what happens is that we go under slavery or under bondage where we uh, allow tormentors into our life. Uh, so, um, this morning we were talking about roots of bitterness. Now, roots of bitterness come up uh, in, in our life when things um, happen that are unfair in our life. And uh, life, li my life uh, and your life are going to have things that happen that are unfair. You know, um, you might have a teacher that says, stop that talking. And you think, I wasn't even talking. It was the person next to me. I was just listening. <laughs> no. <laughs> but sometimes teachers, teachers um, can accuse us. Parents can sometimes say things uh, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, be unfair. They don't mean to be. Sometimes they, they get grumpy and they make decisions uh, when they're grumpy. And uh, it seems very, what's that word? unfair seems very unfair and uh, what we need to do is in those situations sometimes we have to forgive who our parents can we believe could parents make mistakes never yeah sometimes parents make mistakes can can pastors make mistakes 
No, never. <laughs> Sometimes even passes. Uh, yeah, so people can make mistakes, but what we've got to do is we've got to be, uh, if we're going to stay free, what we've got to do is we've got to p be able to forgive people who have been unfair in our lives. You know, some people have had terrible unfairness uh, in their life and they've been able to forgive the people who've been very unfair to them and, uh, and they've gone free. But there's other people who have just not very much unfair things and they refuse to let those people go and they have terrible things that manifest in their life. And, and there's a reason for that because what happens is that when we walk in unforgiveness, we let the enemy come into our life. And so our message this morning, what would it be? We need to forgive people from, from debts because we don't want the enemy to come in and steal from us. Now, I started out saying that what happens is that when you're walking in the Christian life there's a, and you're walking by faith, faith what do we say happens? There's a lot of contra contradiction. There's a lot of unfair things that happen to you when you walk by faith. Satan sees to it that there's unfair things that are going to happen in your life. What do you think the key is to keep walking in faith? What would you have to have in your accounts book? A very short accounts book. You'd need to be able to forgive quickly, wouldn't you, if you're going to walk by faith because there's lots of contra... What's the word? Contradiction. That's right, Pete. And Jesus actually, in, in, he, in uh, Mark 11, if you read that, he says, always, when you're believing for something, always keep forgiving people because you're going to have opportunity to have to forgive people. And it's really important. You're going to walk in love because faith works by love. And if you run out of love, you also run out of what? Faith. <laughs>